from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul got to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. They could not believe he was really a disciple. Barnabas, however, took charge of him, introduced him to the apostles, and explained how the Lord had appeared to Saul and spoken to him on his journey, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Saul now started to go around with them in Jerusalem, preaching fearlessly in the name of the Lord. But after he had spoken to the Hellenists and argued with them, they became determined to kill him. When the brothers knew, they took him to Caesarea and sent him off from there to Tarsus. The churches throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria were now left in peace, building themselves up, living in the fear of the Lord, and filled with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. You, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and shall have their fill. They shall praise the Lord, those who seek him. May their hearts live forever and ever. You, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. All the earth shall remember and return to the Lord. All families of the nations worship before him. They shall worship him, all the mighty of the earth. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust. You, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. And my soul shall live for him. My children serve him. They shall tell of the Lord to generations yet to come. Declare his faithfulness to peoples yet unborn. These things the Lord has done. You, Lord, are my praise in the great assembly. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, our love is not to be just words or mere talk, but something real and active. Only by this can we be certain that we are children of the truth and be able to quieten our conscience in his presence. Whatever accusations it may raise against us, because God is greater than our conscience and he knows everything. My dear people, if we cannot be condemned by our own conscience, we need not be afraid in God's presence. And whatever we ask him, we shall receive, because we keep his commandments and live the kind of life that he wants. His commandments are these, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another as he told us to. Whoever keeps his commandments lives in God and God lives in him. We know that he lives in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. Whoever remains in me bears fruit in plenty. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he cuts away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes to make it bear even more. You are pruned already by means of the word that I have spoken to you. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself, but must remain part of the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, with me in him, bears fruit in plenty. For cut off from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is like a branch that has been thrown away. He withers. These branches are collected and thrown on the fire, and they are burnt. But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask what you will, and you shall get it. It is to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit, and then you will be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. My father, who I haven't been able to see since the beginning of lockdown uh, for medical uh, age reasons, in, tunes in to this live stream and I think uh, likes it when there are some familiar references to family life or whatever. So can I say good morning, Dad? And I hope you won't mind if I talk for a moment about you and Mum in the garden. To say Mum was the gardener, Dad was the labourer. And Mum's instructions were very clear, especially when it came to the pruning. Dad would be allowed, if allowed at all, to gently remove some of the dead wood, to be careful to follow the rules. The gardeners here will know better than I. You know, you find the node or whatever it's called, you cut above or below. I'm bluffing slightly to suggest I know how these things work. But there is a whole um, rule book about how it should be done. Very sadly, my mother died, and Dad was left to use his own judgment. I went home one day, and as I parked in front of the house, I noticed he was pruning uh, the pink climbing rose that goes up the front of the house uh, around the window. I say pruning. It was much more of a slash-and-burn exercise, as he cut great chunks out of the climber, and has heard, it seemed, talking to himself, saying, yes, I know, I know, but there you are, what can you do? As he realised I was listening, he said to me, it's all right, I was talking to your mother. I know somewhere she is saying to me, Kevin, just a little bit, and I'll pay for it one day when she'll be able to tell me what she thinks, but for now, let's see what happens. What happened was the most tremendous display of roses that year. The climber responded magnificently to this all-out attack and it came back fighting with vigour. Of course, even if we know the theory, it's very hard to have the confidence to put it in practice. And I cut down uh, roses in the garden. My instinct was to follow mum, trim a little bit here and there, but it doesn't work nearly so well. Perhaps is how we like uh, to be with ourselves too. A little careful, a little trim here and there, nothing too challenging, safer to be modest. This morning's gospel is, of course, not about roses, but about vines. It's a powerful image that the Lord gives, especially when you reflect on the place that vines had in the culture at the time. This is not about what will or may not make the garden look pretty. This is about the production of the fruit of the vine, the livelihood of many of those who were listening, at the heart of many elements of their culture. 
The Lord's words are being spoken in the context of the Last Supper. He has taken the cup filled with wine and commanded, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. And of course, it's his blood that will be shed. He himself, as it were, will be cut down. The care of the vine is of crucial importance. Vine dressers know that they must prune the only hope if it is to produce its precious fruit. In the analogy we've just heard, we are the vine, the father, the vine dresser, who cares desperately that we produce fruit, who knows that pruning is our hope, and on occasion, not just a trim, but a challenge. It's even there, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes to make it bear even more. The first reading reminds us of one of the most dramatic examples of that life challenged, pruned by God and the fruit that it bears. Saul has come from an extraordinary place. We are told, and we heard during this past week, that he approved of the killing of Stephen, actively persecuting Christians But now his conversion, his pruning on the road has changed his life beyond imagination. Even the apostles find it hard to believe that such change is possible. But he is now part of the vine and through the courage of Barnabas they come to see the incredible fruit that he will bring forth in his preaching and in his witness. During Lent, we were challenged to be open to that pruning of the gospel. This Easter tide, we are now invited to bear fruit. This is not a passive season where we simply give thanks to God for the resurrection and move on. We are called to follow in the footsteps of Paul and the apostles to declare openly what we have seen and heard, perhaps like Barnabas, to have the courage to step out, even in the most uh, unlikely of circumstances, trusting that it will bear fruit. We may be tempted to play safe, just a little trim, but the words of the Lord are quite uncompromising. We have to remain in him, and with him in us, and we in him, we will bear fruit in plenty. For cut off from the vine, we can do nothing, but as part of the vine, we can bear much fruit.